Hello Jackal, I'm Simon and in today's video I'll show you what my client wanted. The project that I'm currently working on needs some subtitles and also a background for them. The catch being, the background for the subtitles needed to be skewed, slanted, tilted, sheared or any other word that you know for a shape that is being tilted by some degrees. Can this be done in DaVinci Resolve? Obviously yes, you can see it just now. How easy can it be done? We'll find out. Now let's get digital. Now this is the result that you can get that will look really nice. What you can do easily but may not look as nice is to get something like this. Maybe something like this. How can you do this? This is done in the edit page. So I'll go to the media pool and also effects. So the first thing that I'll add is a solid background and change the color of this one in the inspector just so we can see it. Then under the settings we can adjust the zoom. Now you don't have to do it with the zoom, you can leave it at one. Right click on the clip, click new compound clip. Now that this is a compound clip, you have the cropping option available so you can make the adjustments in this way. So maybe we'll crop the top and crop the bottom and also some on the left and some on the right. Now for the rest of the options, as you can see, we don't have any skewing option. The closest to that being is the pitch. So you can either do it in this way if you adjust the pitch to be positive value, you will have to adjust the position. And as you can see, this is now really close to the camera, so you will also have to adjust the zoom to get something like this. And then you will also have to adjust the cropping values again. So this one would be from the top. This is one way how you can skew the shapes in the edit page but you can only skew them in this way. You cannot have the sides be facing the same direction. So that is what I'll show you in the next example. So let's put everything back as it was. What we'll now use is warp and it is found under open effects. So we will use warp, put this onto the clip, maybe zoom out a little bit so I want warp limits to be manual. We will use this as sharp, but before I do, I'll just go back to the transform and zoom this in just so we can see what we are actually doing. So maybe something like this. And now you have to go down here and enable the open effects overlay. And when you click, you will get a dot. This is not where I wanted the dot. So hold Alt or Command and click on the dot again to remove it. Now if you hold Shift and click, this will make a limit node or a limit point. If you just click, this will make a node that you're actually making the adjustments from. So Control Z to go back. Now since we want to skew, shear or tilt or slant the shape, I will zoom in, position the points as close to the corners as possible. So once you position a point, if you're not happy with it, you have to delete it. So Alt click and this is the best that you can get. And what you can do now is simply click on the point, drag it, maybe zoom in a little bit. I have two points, delete one. So zoom in a little bit so you can actually grab the point and move it in. But in this case, it's acting like a polygon. So we're not really seeing what you're doing with the whole image. So I move this point up. So the downside of this is it's not snapping to this point, which is what I would want it. And also we currently have a curve that goes something like this. I'm exaggerating. And the same with this one. 
you can make minor adjustments to fix this so we can go to the warp sharpness and change this to sharp it should fix it we can also change the quality it should fix it a little bit so better in this case is what I want and if you change the scale you can also make minor adjustments in this way you can enable also the on-screen controls to see how the grid looks like and instead of showing the warp points you can show warp vector so you can adjust the arrow to get a more of a straight line so we now made the same shape as before the difference being you can actually take this point and position it like so to get the shape that I've shown you previously but this is all done manually and it doesn't have the same proportions as you would expect so what you can do is well make a fusion composition so right click new fusion composition put this onto a timeline I will now simply add a background node this will serve as a color and rectangle node connect the rectangle to the background node change the color and in the rectangle node you will simply change the width and the height and if you want you do have the current radius but we have the same issue as before we can't make the adjustments of simply skewing this rectangle now what you could do is take the image plane 3d connect it and also take the render 3d node so this is now in the 3d space now the image plane does not have the option that we want but we can use shift space and type in bender this node does have the option that we want so let me display it we have a bunch of options bend taper twist and shear shear is the one that we want as you can see it does exactly what we want the issue with this approach is because it's in the 3d space it's not exact size as this one so if you do use the 3d space you will either have to go to the image plane 3d transform and adjust the z axis and then also adjust the position again so this could be a bit tedious so instead of doing this in the 3d space we'll keep it to the 2d space and keep it simple as simple as possible so we have the rectangle and we have changed the size we can always add the transfer node to adjust the position in the transfer node we again do not have any options to change the shape but what we can do is make two masks so we'll take one rectangle and simply change angle of it so I have used an angle of 60 I will simply position it I will copy this rectangle paste it position this rectangle to the other side but when you do the positioning just make sure that you don't have a corner going through the shape just have one side cut the shape so this is how we will mask it out now you can't just simply connect this to the transfer node as you can see it does weird stuff so I will use a background node change the transparency of it by lowering the alpha so we don't have a black background and connect this with the merge node like so but make sure that the background is actually in the back so yellow input in the merge node Control T with the node selected will switch between these two inputs so now we can connect this to the mask and we should see something happen that is a little bit more what we want now this is almost what we want it's not the outsides we want the insides so with the merge node selected you can go to the settings and click on apply mask inverted now if you change the position of the transfer node of the rectangle you will see something happening so this is because of the mask if you wanted to change the positions 
we would actually want to position the transfer after you have done all of the changes. So in this case, this looks like so. So rectangle one would have to be maybe in this position and rectangle two in this position. So now when I use the transfer node, it doesn't matter where I move it because I'm moving this whole composition that already has the mask applied. And now the last thing that you can do to spice this up a little bit and that little bit will look something like this. So you can add a line at the beginning, maybe at the end, and this is done really simple. So what I will do is simply copy this rectangle because it's at the beginning. We will be able to adjust how thick we want this to be. And to have anything visible, we'll have to add a background node, just like before. So we'll change the color, maybe something like this. Connect it. So now this rectangle is at the top, which is correct, but we see the whole rectangle. We just want to see a little section of it. And you know what you have to do? I'll give you five seconds. That's right, we have to mask it out. And how will we do it? We'll do it by using this section at the bottom, which is basically this whole merge. So what we have to do is simply connect this merge also to the mask. So now when you move this rectangle, it will change the thickness of the line, which you could also use for a loading bar. And if I want now a line to also be at the end, well, I will simply connect these two rectangles like so, and you can now position the rectangle in the back and have a line in the front and in the back. And if you want it, you could also maybe make this one thinner and you could also animate it. So let's just make a quick animation on the center position. Go to the spline. S. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more DaVinci Resolve content, and until next time Jackal, keep it digital.